Okay, so today I have another video for you. Uh, today it's going to be an unboxing and overview of the EVGA 600 watt power supply. Um, on the back you, it says the full name, it's EVGA 600 watt 80 plus. This, um, this power supply is rated 80 plus, as you can see there. Um, it is un not determined whether it is bronze, silver, gold, whatever, I think it is just rated 80 plus. So, uh, some things about the wattage and stuff of this. With the newer graphics cards that came out recently, the 1070, 1080 and the AMD one that's coming out later this month, you can see that they're using less and less power. The 1070 has one 6 pin, 1080 has one 8 pin. And I'm not entirely sure what the RX 480 has, I don't remember. But systems now are going to start using less and less power. So the amount of the higher wattage power supplies are not going to be as needed anymore. So that's why personally I think 600 to 750 is probably the sweet spot when it comes to buying a power supply. Because... You're rarely ever going to build a computer that's going to pull more than 700 watt if you're un unless you're doing SLI or if you're overclocking in like insanely. So I'm going to unbox this now. I have just two other power supply boxes here for a little podium. So this power supply would be on the power supply like tier level. It would be a low tier two or a high tier three. And basically what that means is it's good, but it's not the best of the best. Like up up at the top you'd have um C Sonic and Superflower. Um then you'd on tier 2 you'd probably have uh, HEC and uh, FSP so most likely uh, this power supply is made by HEC and sold by NVIDIA or sorry EVGA it says NVIDIA on the box I got confused um, <laughs> so if we go through what's in the box now so you have your power lead and your big clump of cables connected to your power supply. Okay, that's all that's in the box. No warranty guide or paperwork like it should be because no one really reads them. So you have your entire unit here. As you can see there's an EVGA 600 watt logo right here. And you can see there it's 80 plus. One good thing about this is they do not use any other colors than really black and white. Obviously it is grey, but that's just a combination of the two. So this will really go with any color build, like black and blue, black and red, white and red. Stay. Uh, again, it says 600 there. And nothing on this side. So if we just undo these. So it's good to keep those, they could be used in cable management. So in all of our cables, we have for one, we have our, our 8 pin CPU power. Put that over there. Uh, we have obviously our 20 plus 4. 24 pin motherboard power we have one lead that has two 6 plus 2 pins or two uh, PCIe 8 pins Molex and floppy and without getting them all tangled up even more we have three SATA and then a, another one that is just three SATA. 
So that's good. They don't have as many Molex on these because usually even if you're connecting fans up by Molex, which I do now and then, just to get them running at the highest speed. Uh, you you never really use more than one because most fans that are powered by Molex are just a pass-through connector. So power goes into the fan, but power also goes straight through into what would be a normal Molex connector on the other side. So really you can use one and just daisy chain all the Molex. So even three is somewhat overkill. If six, with 600 watts, you're not gonna be water cooling realistically. You want at least 750 watt for that, I'd say. But um, it means that if you were, if you found a way to do it and you maybe running in an ITX system, not very powerful system, and you wanted to do something to do with water cooling, it means if you wanted to run fans off Molex and you still had two Molex left, if you had two pumps obviously in the mini ITX system, you're not going to have that, but it just means that there's possibilities. Now, of course, there's a downside. It's not modular, but this is, I think, 50 euro give or take, it's the same in dollars. The exchange rate is insignificant now. Um, it's like $50. If you're spending that much on a power supply, you're doing a budget system. Now, 600 watts is perfect for a relatively high-end system, but you can probably build a system that'll play almost anything on Ultra uh, at 1080p for 600 watts, especially with the new 1080 and stuff. It's very, very um, plausible. So, I think it's priced very well, and I, I like for one, which is one thing that not many people talk about, is the label. Sometimes, especially with Corsair ones, you can see it's the CX600 is green, our VS550 underneath that is orange. If you don't have a system that has those colors implemented in it, then you're going to have to take off the sticker which is just unnecessary work but when it's black and white it's sure what does it matter it's just black and white it's not going to get in the way of a color scheme even if, even if it's black and red it's not going to draw your eyes away from something like if if, the, if it was blue or green it's not going to draw your eyes away from the red so it that's a good thing on their part and really that's all i have to say about this power supply but that's been my unboxing and overview of the EVGA 600 watt 80 plus. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.